Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, we are going to take you through a presentation of Sunlight's Party Time website. At, over here, we have Amy Nagai. Um, I'm Anu Narayan Swami, Lindsay Young, Kathy Kylie, Liz Bartolomeo, Keenan Steiner, and Luis Serino, who's our newest member of the Party Time team. So I'll give you a little bit of background on how we got started with doing party time. About four or five years ago, um, my colleague, Bill Allison, had a friend who's a lobbyist. And he was really annoyed by all these fax, um, you know, whatever junk he used to get on the fax machine, inviting him to all these fundraisers. He didn't care about that. He wanted to get to the Chinese menu as part of the pile. So he just, he didn't know what to do with it. And he was complaining about it to Bill. And Bill said, I will take it off your hands. So that's how Party Time got started. And um, I think we launched 2008 during the uh, elections, um, at the conventions actually. Nancy Watsman started up the entire uh, website. So what you're going to see here is uh, we'll show you how you can use Party Time for reporting and you learn how you can find information on the site, how you can read a fundraiser, how it's important, uh, what kind of info information is actually important that you see on a fundraiser flyer, or how you can manipulate some of the data elements. Um, another key component to the site is that you can download all this information. And Lindsay will take you through how you can search some of this and um, just massage the data to get better information out of it. Um, Keenan Steiner, who's actually gone to some of these fundraisers, many of which he'd be, he's been not allowed to enter, but he can talk about his experience there. And also, he covered some of the fundraisers and parties that happened at the conventions. He was down there for the Republican and Democratic ones. So he can give you some color and background to what actually goes on at these uh, parties and events. Um, now, on the site, we have, of course, um, a new site right now. So we've added a few elements to it. One of the key things is um, the yearly and calendar and the calendar view that we've uh, added. And you can see uh, how many fundraisers happened in a week, in a month, what the overall structure during the year looks like, and things like that. Um, we'd like to remind people that what we are collecting here is probably just very, very few um, of the fundraisers that are actually taking place. We don't claim to have a full set. So, and of course, we would love to get more. So if you guys get anything, please send it our way. Um, and as you can see, September, right at the end, has a little mountain there. And that's because that was during the fundraiser. Uh, that was during the convention. So. We put up all the events, and that's why there's like a peak there to about, I think we had around 700 events at the time. Um, the other important addition that we have right now is a quick view that you can see right at the bottom of the page, which has the latest blog entries, which has the newest events that we've uh, added that we enter into the data, and the upcoming events. So if there's anything happening tomorrow, day after, for Obama or Romney, or any other delegation or a candidate you are tracking, you'll find that information there. Um, the latest blog entries, we generally do a roundup of what's happening in the upcoming week, which Lewis writes up. And um, we publish that on the blog. So that's another way that you can track some of the information that we have on the site. Um, the main idea for party time is to find out how candidates are raising the money. So you always see every, every three uh, months they put out you know, declarations of how much money they, lay, uh, they raised in the last three months, several millions in some cases, only a couple of thousands in the others. But party time allows you to look at this data, find out how they're raising this money in terms of the events that, they're, that are held and things like that. So I'm quickly going to take you through how you search the data. So up on top, near the yellow arrow, you can see I've looked for Tim Kaine, who is running for Virginia Senate seat. And if you search on any name or a candidate that you're interested in, that will give you take you to a list of 
fundraisers that are relevant for the person. Um, you can also search by a name of a host or uh, any, any kind of PAC information or um, any other group that, has, that you know has had fundraisers or have hosted a fundraiser. So I'm just taking you through one example to show you how you can quickly search the, uh, search the site. So at first, of course, you can see stories which are about Tim Kaine. But the most important thing that you're probably interested in is this, um, this part, which actually lists, if you click on that, that'll list all the fundraisers for Tim Kaine. And I have actually looked at, this is like a cooking show where they have everything semi-cooked and bring it up on the table. So, um, so I have, I looked for Tim Kaine and I got one fundraiser which had a whole bunch of hosts. And this is really interesting because um, you see the host is what is really important when you're looking at some of this data. And you have a list of people who were probably present, you don't know that, but are probably present at the reception. Um, they, could be, they could be people who have contributed to his campaign, they could be friends, they could be important people. So you want to try and see how you can background the people who are listed as the host. And so just taking you through some of this data, when we say beneficiary, we mean the candidate or um, any other information present about the candidate. That'll be in the beneficiary field. So Tim, Kaine is, Tim Kaine's campaign is benefiting from this fundraiser. So that's the criteria for that. Host is any person who is hosting the fundraiser, but it can also be other people who could be present there and we know have something to do with the fundraiser. So I'll take you through how you read some of these fundraiser flyers also, but the host term is important and that's where you can start digging into more about these um, you know, parties. So if you look at this, you, the first thing you probably want to see is who these people are. One of the things you can look for is if they are a lobbyist. And for that, we actually take you through using Influence Explorer, which is another um, site that Sun Life Foundation maintains. You can go to influenceexplorer.com and it lists all. So this is basically a hub for all kinds of campaign finance information. You can find uh, FEC data, which is federal campaign contributions. You can find state-level state data from um, National Institute of Money and State Politics. The information that we have from the, uh, from, on federal information we have, get, uh, we get it from uh, the Center for Responsive Politics. We also have other information on the site, including grants, contracts, and some information from, um, from other agencies. But for now, we're most in, mostly interested in the lobbying data. So if you go to the lobbying tab here, you first go to the data tab, and then you click, you'll see a sidebar, and you click on lobbying. And within that, you want to search for, you pull this down, and you search for name of lobbyist. So over here, you can say, OK, one of the names from the host site, you can put in here and see if that person was a host. Now, another important caveat here is that the person you're looking for may have the same name as a person who's a lobbyist. So you might want to do some additional digging, phone calls, research to actually find out if it is the person that you are actually looking for. So that's one of the important things that you can do with the party time data. Um, OK. so. After looking, after taking you through some of the searches, a couple of things that I'm going to look at is a few stories that we've actually done with this data. And you know, you may have questions like, okay, what do I do with this information? This is too much, or what do I do with just one fundraiser? So it's more than that. It's about um, it's about taking a look at the larger data set for the entire delegation and the campaign itself. But more than that, you can follow one campaign, you can follow one ca uh, delegation. Another thing is you can look for major donors. So are hosts major donors to the campaign? Are they campaign bundlers? These are important things that you can find 
using this data. Of course, there's a lot of legwork involved after this. Um, so one of the stories that we did recently, um, one of our fellows this year, Kat Lucero, did this uh, story where she looked at um, Joseph Kennedy's fundraiser, just one fundraiser for him. And he's running for Barney Frank's seat. And what she found was that there were several Kennedy family members contributing and hosting uh, fundraisers for him. And um, also that Carolyn Kennedy was giving to his campaign. There were other lobbyists giving to his campaign who had ties with the Kennedy family or who were uh, fans of Barney Frank. So that is a kind of story you can dig into. And we did this a couple of months ago. Um, Kathy, if you could put up a link, perhaps, to the story. Thank you. Um, another story was actually, this is about Romney's uh, bundlers, which USA Today uh, did using some of our data. So of course, all of us know that Romney is not releasing his bundlers, unlike Obama and several of the, of the previous presidential candidates. Um, like in 2008, McCain and Obama decided that they were going to release information on anybody who was uh, bundling over $50,000. $50, but Romney's refused, so everybody's on a mission to expose these people and find out what's going on. So what uh, USA Today did was they took a list of hosts from the Romney um, fundraisers that he was holding and looked at people who were, whose names were appearing in several fundraisers. And they could actually hone in and be like, OK, Mary Ackerman is probably a, a bundler for the campaign. So they put out a list. And this list, you can find a similar list at the Center for uh, Responsive Politics site also. They've used a similar methodology. And they also looked at um, information coming in from press releases and uh, you know anything that the campaign would actually give them. So it's a combined combination of several things because the campaign wasn't releasing a list at all. Um, so a lot of the information that we actually get on party time, we get from uh, anonymous sources. And these people are usually lobbyists. They are you know, people who are working on the, uh, on the Hill that some of our editors and reporters go out and just know at a personal level. So they upload this fundraiser or these flyers that they get, or sometimes we just get them emailed to us. And then um, we strip out any kind of information that uh, comes in, any kind of personal information, fax numbers usually, you know, somewhere at the bottom, we strip all that information out. And then we enter this data. And that's the most tedious part. So after going through a process of uh, digitizing this um, and actually putting it online, you'll find a lot of these um, a lot of these fundraisers are actually uploaded at uh, on Scripd, which is a document uh, reserve. And um, and then we digitize some of this data. We also make it available for download via CSV file. A um, couple of pointers before I take you into the downloading function and Lindsay talks more about uh, how to manipulate the data is a um, couple of things that we've also added to this which doesn't quite fit in in either the host or beneficiary section is the other lawmakers mentioned in the fundraiser. Very often you'd find that if there is a rookie politician who is having a fundraiser, somebody like uh, Eric Cantor or John Boehner or somebody who has a higher profile in Congress will go in and kind of back that person up. So in this case, we have several lawmakers who appear as part of being uh, at this event. event. Um, so you should you know, probably take a look at uh, these names also to give you a better idea of what's going on and who would actually be present at this. Very often, you'll find that they highlight which committee a specific pers a member of Congress is in. So you can imagine that if it's an energy committee, there'll be a whole bunch of uh, energy lobbyists that go to attend the fundraiser. So that's another clue about what's happening. Um, and the last thing I want to leave you with is when you're looking at these fundraisers, 
you should also be you know checking other people who are um, involved in this process like for example you want to check challengers you want to check the entire delegation to kind of compare and contrast how much money is being raised how they're doing it and things like that um, and of course if you look uh, on the front page we have a download tab where you can download all the data if you're in a newsroom uh, which has a good uh, data team you can also use our API and uh, manipulate the data in a much easier fashion. Uh, we uh, you can also get an RSS feed for a specific member of Congress. If you go to a page where, say for Tim, for example, Tim Kaine, if that page is highlighted for you, there is at the bottom of the page you'll find a link where you can get an RSS feed for everything for Tim Kaine, which is another way of just following what's happening and if we have any new information for your delegation or candidate. So um, I think Lindsay is going to take people through some of the uh, data manipulation. Thank you, Anu. Um, <coughs> OK, so once uh, you get the data downloaded uh, on that last page, that, that page address is linked to you on this slide. And that's the politicalpartytime.org backslash API. And you want to click, right, you want to click onto this CSV option and then you want to right click on the results to save. Once you do that, um, on the bottom of your screen you can see it opens like a, any normal Excel page. Um, a quick way to look through um, and find, for instance, foreign ra fundraisers would be to sort by state and uh, the states will be in uh, abbreviated state form and then the countries um, are in a, a longer name form, but if they don't fit, then the country code will be listed. So that's an easy way to sort and find foreign fundraisers, which can be really fun. Um, and if you are looking for a leadership pack, but maybe you don't know what are the names of all the leadership packs, if you sort um, by the CRP ID, which is the last option on the spreadsheet, it will group politicians with their um, leadership packs or joint fundraising vehicles. Um, which are all very important. Um, another good tip once you're looking at the, the spreadsheet and maybe a particular entry doesn't make sense to you, you can always look up that original that we have scanned on the website. And all you do is use the key that's given on the first page or the first column and then you add that key number to the end of the URL politicalpartytime.org backslash party and then you just put the number of the key in and you can see whatever invitation that it is that you have a question about. Um, it's, it's also good to look up uh, politicians by just putting the, their CRP ID at the end of this, this next address right here, the politicalpartytime.org backslash Paul um, and you'll get any of the, their committees or joint committees, et cetera. And if you want to quickly make links for yourself, um, you can add an extra column and just concatenate the two. Um, I'll show you an example in a second, but basically the, the formula right here is just equals concatenate and the two things you want to join. OK, so right here is a download that I did from the site. And I added these two columns, B and C. Um, the key here, again, that's what we use to look up. So you can just use uh, concatenate and then the two cells you want. In this case, we want um, this cell. Um, after you have your formula in, you can um, just enter and then double click to carry down. Uh, I carried down the first column, which you'll see shortly. And with this process, uh, it takes a very short amount of time, and you can have all of your links ready in case you have a particular question on any of these. OK, another um, useful thing to do is to sort by party. And because party is given at the end of a name, um, you can do that by with a simple formula again. And that's written on the slide 
And this just works for politicians. It doesn't work for for groups. So you don't want to um, use it for PACs, but it works for all of our, our politicians. And I'll go through one. Okay, everyone should be able to see my screen now. Um, like we saw before, we have the keys and we have the names. Um, and then I added this column C right here. And then I inserted our formula, which is was on the previous slide and um, it's MID and, and you can you can read it but basically it, it looks through the text and it finds where a, the parent opening parenthesis is for the affiliation and it takes the next character after that um, and, it, and this works very well um, you can see uh, for any Um, it and right now I have it sorted by affiliation so I have all the Republicans together and all the Democrats together but that again just added one row and used this formula um, which is on the slide and you can get all of the affiliation what Lindsay just showed you guys is really interesting and important because you can very quickly identify which specific state you're interested in or uh, whether you want to see a Republican Democratic divide or whatever it is. So these are just quick and easy ways to manipulate some of this data because what we give you is just a bulk download and you probably don't need as much information as we're. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, sorting by date is extremely helpful. Um, look, just looking for the particular um, Congress people that you are interested in. And you can do um, a lot of things with bulk data that you can't do just doing searches on the site. Um, one of the things that uh, is more fun would be, a map it, would be mapping. And so I'm just going to show you mapping at a few different stages. Um, and that's something that you can do with our data. Um, so what I did for this example is I started off on um, the first page, which you'll be seeing shortly, um, which is just a, the bulk download of all of the information. Um, after that, I did a quick data sort and then chose to sort um, by state because um, I and then from that just got the California entries um, which are all here. Um, before mapping um, I, use, I use Google Fusion tables which I think is very easy to use. Um, you just want to clean it up a bit, um, make sure that some of them uh, come from invitations which were not meant to be standard data sets but we make them into standard data sets. So there are certain ones that have information that we just don't have. We might not have the address on all of them. Um, for mapping, I take out the ones that don't have addresses, and I um, take out other ones for whatever reason. I also rename um, a, the address, city, and state zip code. Originally, they're called venue, address, venue, city, venue, state, and venue zip code. But if you're doing mapping just with a Google Fusion table, that can sometimes confuse it. So renaming those fields um, is good. I also take out extra fields that might not be interesting or I don't want to include. Um, address, address line two doesn't usually get used and can kind of confuse Google more than it helps. So I, I took that out. Um, but I kept in things that I thought were interesting. I also made a... Um, link for all of the invitations so um, our map can have interactive data that has links to the invitations. Um, from that I just use um, a Google Fusion table um, and after saving as a, a CSV, um, if you have a Google account this, um, this is Google Drive, um, used to be Google Docs but you can use it the same way. Um, to start something, uh, start a project um, you can do create and then under the more options um, you can use fusion tables. Um, 
you then can choose a file to upload, and it's important to um, to use a file that's CSV or a file that's compa um, compatible with the, the format. So here's a an example, and then you you choose next. Um, I've set I've already set one up, so I'll go to that one moment. Okay, so this is the Google Maps version of the CSV that we had before. You can see the key number, uh, the beneficiary, when it starts, um, et cetera, et cetera. And making maps with uh, Google Fusion tables is pretty easy. Um, right now, we just choose Visualize and then Map. And I did come in earlier, and uh, you do have to do a little bit of data cleanup. Um, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, every now and then, Google has problems mapping different things. Uh, another nice thing about the Google Fusion tables is that you can uh, change the styles a little bit. If you don't want um, certain icons, you can, you can change. A uh, large green icon, I can change it to. Which seems appropriate for money, political mm -hmm. money. Okay, and now you can see it's been updated. Um, we also have windows that will open when you click on a thing. Um, right now, you can, but those are also changeable. So that's um, configure in info window. And right here, it's all HTML. So if you're fam familiar with HTML, you can um, choose custom and you can have it in any kinds of styles, you can add scroll bars, you can do um, different types of styling. Um, but it's pretty state straightforward if you uh, have HTML experience. And it's a good way to learn, if not. Um, so clicking on uh, one of these points, you can see when it was, what time it was. And I've added links that go to um, that particular event on party time. And you can see the actual invitation, um, which should be up on your screen shortly. OK. Um, and then the great part about this, it's, it's really easy to um, share and to put into any type of blog post. You just click on Get Embeddable Link. And you have to make sure that your table is public first, so here uh, I'm going to change the visibility, and then you just change from private to public on the web, and save that. Okay. Um, and then get embeddable link, and then the paste HTML embed into a website. You just paste that into a website, and it should work. And it should have all of the same things. That people will be able to zoom on their own. Um, if you know, if someone is more interested in the Hollywood fundraisers, um, they could, you can zoom in over there. And all of the functionality is there at any level. <coughs> but uh, so we've used this for like. Looking at the week ahead, um, you can look at foreign fundraisers this way. Uh, we've also had a really great map that we made a, for the conventions on you know where the conventions par parties were happening. Um, so that's just something that you can do with the data, but there's a lot of possibilities. So one of the things that you can do is uh, you can also uh, find parties on party time, go to them, and sometimes get in, but at least you can talk to people as they go in and out, and uh, you can often get great stories from that. And Keenan will talk about his experience doing that and maybe give you some tips, uh, do's and don'ts. We've been, for example, sort of following who bundlers are for um, Paul Ryan, for um, uh, Mitt Romney and Barack Obama. So um, we've I've gone recently to some hotel events in Washington D.C. Um, where Romney hosts um, these roundtables that are sometimes ten thousand uh, dollars a piece to get into, and um, um, in these hotel lobbies, you have a lot of the bundlers uh, sort of 
just uh, and 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 lobbyists coming by, and a lot of them just don't talk to me when I when I ask them questions, but some of them will, and they'll tell me sort of you know what's going on in there, and and uh, and um, how many people are in there, and what the um, discussions about. So you sort of just um, uh, you, you can you can find a story that way, and then. Um, um, there are name tags at these events. Figure you, you, there, you know, and if you're familiar with some lobbyists in DC, you know, you know, you, you can you can um, you can recognize some some names of some some of Romney's big bundlers. Um, um, I'll go to these events and find you know politicians will walk in to, to stop by often. So um, uh, I've run into Scott Brown and Trent Lott before, uh, who's a former Speaker of the House. So you just you just run into people and. Um, even though these are closed events, um, you'd be surprised uh, that if, if you're just uh, persistent and, and keep asking questions, someone's going to talk to you. Um, so I've written some stories about that. Um, and um, let's see. Uh, as, as far as the uh, conventions went, um, there were parties uh, throughout the um, throughout the week during the political conventions, and um, uh, it was the, uh, the the same kind of thing. If you just sort of stake these things out, and luckily we were able to um, get um, tickets by um, you know people walk people would be leaving with their with their tickets to, to the Democratic Governors Association, um, you know concert, and we'd ask them for their tickets, and all of a sudden we'd be let in, and then. I, you know, my colleague uh, Liz and I were inside of a party with, um, you know, go-go dancers dancing on tables and, um, you know, 70s themed disco sort of lavish event with seven uh, Democratic governors um, rubbing shoulders with lobbyists and we're just in the room there and do interviews right from the inside. So um, um, there's sort of uh, opportunities to, to get in the door. Um, at some of these events. Um, I wondered if Keenan could talk a little bit about um, what are the what what are the ways you found that are most successful for infiltrating fundraising? The important thing is just sort of act like you belong there. <laughs> <laughs> um, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to dress very, very nice, but um, just say you know, I have I have said, you know, I'm here for the uh, Kevin Yoder this isn't. This actually happened. This is at the NRA headquarters in DC. I'm here for the Kevin Yoder fundraiser, and they they buzz me up. They don't really expect reporters to be there, so then I'm all of a sudden in the NRA boardroom and um, and sitting there with like there's like uh, you know refreshments in the corner, and I start doing my interviews and I um, introduce myself as a reporter, and and then I got kicked out. But at least you know I'm not trying to lie to anyone, but. Um, uh, how do I know that I'm not allowed in? I mean, I'm telling, I'm just saying, you know, can I come into the event? I'd like to, you know, be there to see what, what it's like, and they let you in. You don't, and um, after you identify yourself, if they kick you out, then they kick you out. But uh, um, there's there's no reason to, uh, um, you know, be shy about entering these events. Some of these events are sort of a come and go events, and they're not like checking at the door at all. Um, so there's no reason to be like squeamish. You're not interrupting on anybody, um, uh, and just be okay with getting a no a lot of the time. I mean, I talk, sit, stand outside, and people want to, you know, hide their faces, uh, hide their name tags. But then there's like a guy who's like, okay, I'll talk to you. Like, let's walk around the corner, and like, I'll tell you what's up. So, um, uh, and then those people um, can be good sources for you down the road too. So. Um, I mean, some people that go to these events understand that these aren't really like secret events. There's nothing secret about going on. So why is everyone sort of being so secretive? Um, actually, I don't have the answer to that. Uh, we don't really know. I mean, I, um, I think, I, so, you know, uh, some people sort of recognize that, that it's not really a big deal. So what? I'm giving money. What do you want to know? And if well, if you can look at the story that uh, we have up on the screen now, this is one of the stories Keenan talked about. We knew about this event because of party time data. It was right in our neighborhood. It's not too far from uh, just a few blocks from our offices, so it seemed like an irresistible target. 
And uh, so Keenan went over, and um, he did not get into the room, I don't think, at this one, but he did uh, talk to a lot of people on their way in and out of the event. And from those interviews, you can get a lot of uh, interesting information about what goes on inside. And as Keenan said, you can develop sources uh, who will then be useful to you. So I think this is a really good example of how you can uh, combine very sophisticated use of data from our website with very old-fashioned reporting footwork to really enrich uh, your picture of what's going on in, in politics and to help whether you're a political activist or a newspaper reporter or a blogger. I think um, these are tools that can come in uh, really handy for you. Um, I also wanted to say, uh, as we're coming uh, towards the end of our hour, I want to emphasize that party time is kind of the ultimate crowdsource tool. Uh, Anu explained the history of it to you. We do rely a lot on the kindness of strangers. Um, some of our sources are, a lot of our sources are inside the Beltway, and so that's why uh, we tend to be heavy on Washington invites. Of course, that's where a lot of the fundraisers are held for incumbents. But we do really want to expand our reach, and we really want to get more information on uh, the, uh, some of the other invites uh, happening in other parts of the world, and also uh, because, as you've, as you've heard, they're international. Uh, so Anu is showing you right now uh, on party time the way that you can upload an invitation. You can do so anonymously. You can uh, upload here on the site. You can also email us at partytime at sunlightfoundation.com. The address is there. Uh, we strip out, as you heard, all of uh, any identifying information. So um, our sources and methods remain confidential. You don't have to worry about that. If you are a reporter and are worried about losing your scoop, please don't, uh, because uh, we don't care if we get these invitations after the event. Uh, what we care about is building a database that's as comprehensive as it can be so that we can help you connect the dots. Uh, party time is a great resource running up to the election for, source, uh, for, for uh, showing you where politicians are raising money and how they're raising money. You know, sometimes these, uh, the details on these fundraisers are real doozies. Um, and that's great color. But the real utility of this tool comes after the election, when you're wondering why Congressman X or Y is voting a certain way. You might want to look back at party time and see what lobbyists helped raise money for that individual. And it can be very, very revealing. So uh, I, I think Anu has walked you through how you can find those names and uh, you can connect them uh, to the interests that they are lobbying for by using our Influence Explorer tool. We've given you those links on the chat. So I think um, the point is that uh, write your story. Send us a link to your story. If you're staking out, but send us the invitation, whether it's before or after the event, so that we have those important details and that, that you and everybody else can go back and, and look at this resource. This yeah. resource is only as good as our sources, and you are our sources. Yeah, just to add to what Kathy was saying, I mean, look at the, at the timing of these events. Um, you know, uh, big financial services overhaul in 2009, voted on in the House um, in December of 2009. If you look at who was fundraising at that time, um, where the House, uh, uh, at the time, you can see who was fundraising with financial services lobbyists. And there was a scandal um, investigated by the um, Office of, um, not the House Ethics Committee, but the Independent Office of Government, what the OGE. Heck? OGE, Office of Government Ethics. Ethics. They um, looked at members of Congress who voted against the final financial services overhaul who at the very same day, sometimes um, at the, the lunch before the vote uh, against um, financial services reform, were fundraising from financial services lobbyists. And they used party time in their investigation. And I've done that many, many times. And every time there's like a big piece of legislation that's running through Congress, um, check out the database and sort by date, 
see who's raising money from who. And uh, just to get back to this question of uh, how we get our information, um, I do want to, uh, we do try to reach out. We do, um, in addition to what comes over the transom, uh, we, like everybody else, are watching the news. Uh, we do reach out to folks and try to get information about fundraisers as they come in. And a good example is on your screen now. Uh, over the weekend, I saw that the Boston Globe had a very interesting story about this little slumber party that's going on right now, even as I speak in New York City, at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel for uh, bundlers uh, for Mitt Romney. And uh, as you probably know, we've mentioned that term a couple of times before, uh, bundlers are the folks who are um, the people who raise money in big chunks. And the invitation that you're seeing isn't really an invitation, it's a schedule for this event uh, we didn't get an invitation. We, of course, would love to have one. But the reporter who wrote the story for the Boston Globe was nice enough to share this document with us. And now it's available on this resource uh, for everybody to look at and uh, to mine. So as you can see, there's a lot of interesting names on this uh, invite. And those names have been entered above uh, under the host uh, category. So this tells you. Uh, some of the big names who are uh, either lending their clout or their money, or in some cases both, to, uh, in this case, Mitt Romney. And obviously this is a very interesting, uh, this is interesting information to have now, and it will be interesting information to have potentially in the future, depending on how things go on November 6th. Yeah, I mean, and just to, to continue on that theme, um, what about super PACs? What about the shadowy nonprofits? What are they doing? Uh, just search American Action Network. They are one of the big Republican players um, that uh, uh, is founded by former Senator Norm Coleman. And, you know, yes, they're not a, a member of Congress, but we <coughs> keep track of what they're doing too. And during the convention, um, they held. Uh, events throughout the week to uh, that actually cost. Um, uh, you see here, uh, there was they sponsored this uh, big party on the 31st of August, and here were the corporate sponsors. And um, this is another feature actually looking at now when we don't have an invitation, we uh, will put the news source uh, up. You can see the news source is Politico, and um, um, we'll we'll fill out at least some details even if we don't have an actual invitation. So um, you can do that with, um, there's, there's another event here that I can't find right now, but it showed uh, that the American Action Network was, find it, was um, during that week uh, hosting an event for $250,000 uh, for major donors. And, and for $250,000, the donors could go to a whole slew of events throughout the week. So yeah. um, this is, I think this is one of the things that uh, Keenan was talking about. And again, venues are interesting. This is a search for a venue. That means the site where the party was at the convention in Tampa. American Action Network had a pavilion where uh, they hosted a number of events. So sometimes you can find uh, a lot of interesting um, uh, information and sometimes it's just funny to see how many uh, certainly in Washington there are certain restaurants that uh, that the members go back to over and over again as you can imagine they're all um, close to the Capitol so uh, I would say that um, the, the way you can use party time is really limited only by your imagination uh, we're hoping that some of you on the line will come up with uh, even better ideas than we've had here but it, uh, it's a tool that lends itself to everything from very simple searches for what's happening next week to um, much more sophisticated uh, uses of the data like Lindsay showed you with uh, creating maps. And, and sometimes, as you all know, I think uh, that can, uh, looking at the data in different ways can give you insights into what's happening. Uh, and, and again, I think especially trying to match when you connect the dots between when the fundraisers were held, who was at the fundraisers, and uh, when what's happening on Capitol Hill, um, making those links, I think, can be very, very revealing. So I'd like to just open up for a second to see if anyone has uh, questions. Uh, you press star seven to unmute yourselves. We're, uh, we're happy to hear back from you, so, um, so let us know if there's anything. And I will also say that, um, 
for those of you, I know we're, we're giving you a lot of information in a short time. Uh, we are here to help. So uh, this is not the end of uh, your relationship, doesn't have to be with the Sunlight Foundation. Um, our reporting team and our communications team, uh, we're all represented here. We are available to help with questions anytime. We also maintain a site called Sunlight Academy where we have videos and trainings uh, available at any time of day or night for uh, all of Sunlight's tools, which uh, I think as you can see from what we've shown you, really dovetail together very nicely. I mean, uh, the way you can use Influence Explorer to dig a little deeper uh, on s for some of the background uh, behind some of the bundlers and the lobbyists um, uh, who are hosting these events, I think can tell you a lot uh, that illuminates uh, why people are giving and, uh, and uh, to answer Keenan's question, why they may want, want not want it to be known uh, or want to keep a low profile about their donations. Most people give um, because they have a motivation and uh, that's party time is all about trying to find out what those motivations are. Hey Kathy, how, what if I want to find out parties hosted by just congressional leaders? What would I do then? Well, that's right on our website, funny you should ask. Uh, you can see at the very bottom of our party time page uh, we've, we've created some categories for what we think are uh, things that people will be looking for. Uh, sort of, it's, it's like a frequently asked questions uh, section and it's at the very bottom of the party time page. Uh, and so there you'll see uh, right now the one column says parties held for presidential candidates. Uh, obviously uh, that column may change after November 6th, but, um, but not for long, since presidential candidates seem to start fundraising almost instantaneously as soon as the election's over. But uh, we also then see parties held for congressional leadership, something that uh, might be uh, getting more play in mid-November when we actually start to have elections for congressional leadership. Parties hosted by congressional leadership, and those of you who are paying attention to the chat uh, might have seen that uh, I mentioned that this is an important thing uh, and it will be an important thing later this fall when uh, the parties will be electing leaders for the 113th Congress and you can bet that uh, people who are competing for those jobs are out there trying to gin up as much goodwill as they can by hosting fundraisers for members of Congress and incoming members of Congress, and that's how those elections get won. So that'll be a very interesting thing to watch as we approach those elections in mid-November. And then you can see parties held for committee leadership. Why is that important? Because chair, the chairs of committees decide what legislation gets, uh, gets acted on in their committees, and that decides what legislation comes to the floor. So committee leaders, whether it's the chair of the committee or the ranking member, that would be the top most senior person from the, uh, from the minority party, those can be very revealing too. So, uh, so that's a good column to watch if you're trying to figure out uh, how influence is exercised through fundraising in politics. Yeah, so again, if there's any questions, speak up. But this is an example here. This is about <laughs> sort of two years ago now, but uh, I wrote a story of um, here, if you, of all the the uh, members of Congress who were on the Republican side who were jockeying for leadership positions, and we saw that they were fundraising a lot. Um, and and one reason that is is because as um, to get a, a to to become the, the leader of the House Judiciary Committee, it's not that you have to be like the most judicious person in the world, you have to be like the best fundraiser a lot of the times. And so Lamar Smith will raise money and for his leadership pack and dole his money out to younger members of Congress and gain sort of, um, uh, he gains like cachet with leadership and leadership, you know, it's sort of an unspoken or spoken actually rule between leadership and some of these uh, uh, leading members that you better give you know a million bucks to uh, the party and to young um, younger um, members of Congress and so um, it's a good way to sort of judge the race for a gavel. 
Well, we want to thank you all for participating in this uh, chat. We do have uh, upcoming webinars, as you'll see on your screen. Um, and uh, we hope you can join them for us, uh, join us f for those webinars. We are uh, devoting uh, a lot of time f to uh, political contributions uh, because this is the season. So uh, if you want to know more about how to get political ad information, uh, which is one of our newest tools, Political Ad Sleuth, uh, we'll be rolling that out and doing some training on that next week. And the week following, just in time for Halloween, our spooky dark money special all about uh, how to find the, uh, the names behind some of those uh, stealthy committees as best we can find them. So, uh, so please join us. We're happy to have you. And please know that we're here uh, all the time uh, to answer any questions you might have. Uh, and thanks for coming.